we're going to go back to our wrench design and look at some of the things that went wrong. We created a profile cut to try to mill this out of aluminum. We were engaging all sides of the bit and some of our feed rates were a little fast when we went to our rapids. So let's adjust and try a different machining property and see if we can't get a better result. I'm going to start with creating a setup. And the setup that I'm going to choose is going to be the stock that I'm milling out. So I'll cut a piece of half inch aluminum and then measure it and then put it into the can. So for right now, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to enter some dimensions that are larger than my model. So I'm going to start with the stock box point at the top here in the center. So that way we can find the center of our stock and give us the most amount of error on either side. So let's select Z axis and Y axis or select X and Y. And for the Y, I will click here or for the X, I will click on this long face here and that should flip my model. And now I'm going to flip my Y and I should be back in the right orientation. Now when I go to my stock, I can enter fixed size box. I can choose my width and I'm going to cut a piece that's nine inches, we'll say. The width of my part is going to be three inches. I'll say 3.25. My height, my thickness of the material is 0.25. And again, I did 0.01. The offset doesn't matter because our model is also 0.25. So it should stay the same. And I'm going to hit OK. I now have stock set up. I'm going to use setup four. Rename this as video cam. Okay, this is my previous operation that I was playing with, but I'm going to do the whole process here. Now that I've got my stock set up to my actual dimensions of the piece I cut out, I'm going to first look at this bore. And I will do a 2D operation and I will do a bore. It's asking me to select a tool. And I've already put in a quarter inch end mill. I'll edit the tool. This is our Lakeshore quarter inch three flute end mill for aluminum. Here's the specifications. It's a quarter inch, half inch flute length. Okay, um, this actually has three flutes. And I chose the Tormach ER20. For our feeds and speeds, I went pretty conservative. I kept us within the surface speed that the manufacturer recommended, and I slowed our cutting feed rate down to 13 and a half. We still have low feed per tooth. Our lead in is 10, and our plunge is four. So the plunge is a lot slower, and our cutting is a lot slower. So we'll try to stay conservative, and we can ramp things up. Our spindle speed has stayed the same. And I'll hit OK. All right, I'm going to select that tool. And in our case, I'm going to disable uh, coolant for this part. We can see everything is populated. The next tab is the geometry tab. It's going to ask me to select. I want to select that bottom edge of this uh, bore here, so this internal edge. For my heights, I do want whole bottom and whole top. And what I'm going to do to make sure that it clears my part, since I'm putting sacrificial material in here, I'm going to do a negative 0.01. And that ensures it just goes uh, a little bit below my part. And I'll show that. We can see that it goes just a hair below my part to make sure that it clears that bottom. The next tab is the passes. We can do multiple passes here, and we can look at the pitch of the, um, the helix. I'm going to keep this as the standard for right now, and uh, 
this is basically to hold my tool on the wall. So I'm not looking for any particular tolerance or anything amazing, but uh, I do want it to look good. So I'm gonna leave all of this in here for now. And as for my linking, I think everything looks pretty good for right now. And I'll hit okay. Okay, our bore has populated. We can always simulate. And I'll show my stock. We'll use wall paint and I'll choose material. And let's just see what happens. And it should bore out that hole pretty well. I'll close this. If I wanted to add a finishing pass in here to clean up that inside, I would use a contour. But for now, let's keep operations relatively simple and make our part. We'll add things in the next video. The next step I'm going to do, instead of doing a contour to just create a profile around this part, we're going to use an adaptive. And that will remove a lot of the stock material. So once we've drilled our uh, board, our hole out, we're going to use the same tool, that quarter inch flat. And for geometry, I'm not going, I'm going to select the bottom edge of the part here. As for my heights, I'll turn my part so you can see them. It's going to go to the bottom of the part, which is what I want. And I'm going to end up leaving these all the same for now. We can adjust these later. Passes is very important. Optimal load is the amount that the bit engages within the part. So making sure that we have a small amount, I like to go below half the bit. So we have a 0.25 bit, 0.1 should be below the bit. All right, let's do multiple depths. So our step down is going to be about half the bit. So I will choose 0.125 and it asks us to order by depth or by area. Uh, we're going to order by depth so we'll do one pass at one height and then all the way around the part. We're not going to leave any stock right now. I'm going to go back and do that but we could leave a little bit of stock around the area to make a nice finishing pass. Again we're making a wrench. Our finishing doesn't completely matter at this point but I'll go back and do that. Let's just get a clean path in this video, and the next video we'll add our contours. As for our linking, we're going to leave all of these uh, as is and see if we like our, our ramps. And for the stay down, I'm going to hit most. Okay, I'll hit OK. And this path might take a little while to uh, calculate or generate. But once we get it, we'll check to see what it looks like. That took a little while for me to calculate. But once it's calculated, we've got... Here I've got three passes. I'm actually at 0.1 depth to go a little below the tool. And I'm going to simulate that. Adaptive pass. Here we can see it's just cutting around the stock right now. And we're starting to clear the part here. And here's the adaptive working. You can see we're only engaging just that front side of the bit. And now it's on to the next pass. And once we finish, we should get our part.
all of the passes look the same. The last path only takes off a little bit of material. That should do it to just get a rough uh, part out with a bore and an adaptive clearing that will get rid of most of our material. I'll post another video after this showing how to add a little stock to each of these passes and then giving you the option of doing a finishing pass 